Hello, my name is Rick Pearson and welcome to Prophecy USA, a program specifically designed to unveil the hidden mystery of America's role in Bible prophecy. You know, in past lessons, we've discussed the fiery judgment that's coming to Babylon the Great. However, we also discussed God's open window of deliverance where his bride miraculously escapes that judgment. But is there a future event in prophetic scripture that describes how the hour of judgment will come upon Babylon the Great? If you don't know the answer to that question, stay tuned, because you're about to find out. Welcome back to Prophecy USA. You know, Isaiah 66, 8 asks the question, can a nation be birthed in a day? And that question was answered on May 14, 1948, when U.S. President Harry S. Truman called the Prime Minister of Israel, David Ben-Gurion, recognizing Israel's independence to become a nation. But can a nation be destroyed in an hour? The answer to that question is answered five times in Scripture. Yes, it can, and it will. Remember, God watches over His Word to perform it. If He has said it, He will also do it. If He has purposed it, He will bring it to pass. We've also learned that many of the sins that Babylon has committed, God will judge her in that hour. Specifically, the shedding of innocent blood and the sacrifice of over 60 million innocent children is the sin that tips the scale and provokes the judgment that will come by fire. In episode two, we learned of the eight providential nations that God would raise up and would, would cause them to fall throughout history. Six of those nations have come and gone with only Babylon the Great and the New World Order left to appear before Christ's coming. However, according to scripture, these are not the only nations that are active in the last days. The Bible showcases several more nations that will not only participate, but will divinely execute God's judgment upon Babylon. For a scriptural foundation of what I'm talking about, listen to this. We have learned from previous lessons that in God's eyes, Israel, and specifically Jerusalem, is the geographical center of the world. It is here where we also find an end time event where nations will gather to fulfill their role in Bible prophecy. In this coming war, Ezekiel identifies a spirit named Gog from the land of Magog, who is the chief prince of Noah's descendants according to Ezekiel. This spiritual entity named Gog will put an evil thought into the minds of not only Russia's people, but several other people groups who will join Russia, Persia, Ethiopia, and Libya with them all them with the shield and helmet, Gomer and all his bands, the house of Tagorma of the North Quarters and all his bands and many people with thee. Ethnologists identify Persia as modern day Iran and Iraq. Ethiopia and Libya's names and location have remained intact. Gomer is possibly located in what is now Germany. Togarma is believed to be the name of the region now known as Turkey today. These names may not be the exact countries who join together, but their geographical locations give us an approximation of where the descendants of Noah will come from to fulfill this prophecy. However, it is abundantly clear that these people will be of one mind, with an evil thought, to remove the Jewish people from the covenant land that God has given them. However, according to Ezekiel, there are allied nations who confront the hostile armies coming to attack Israel. Sheba and Dedan, the merchants of Tarshish, with all the young lines thereof shall say unto thee, Art thou come to take a spoil? Hast thou gathered to take a prey? 
ethnologists identify Sheba and Dedan as the present day location of the Saudi Arabian Peninsula and possibly includes Egypt. Tarshish is considered to be the regions of Britain, France, and Spain. It is interpreted that all the young lines thereof refer to Britain's offspring, most likely being the United States of America and Canada. This war has not been fulfilled. The only timeline Ezekiel gives us is, in the latter days thou shalt come into the land against the mountains of Israel. However, God's sure word of prophecy is so detailed it literally gives the result of this war that will take place in the latter days. Welcome back. You know, it's undeniable that Israel and the Mideast nations surrounding her is one of the most volatile geopolitical regions on earth today. But God is still in control and his word has declared the end from the beginning with regards to this war. Ezekiel records that God will instantly punish the nations coming against Israel. He will burn five-sixths of the aggressive nations from their position on the northern mountains of Israel, which today is known as the Golan Heights. These are the same Golan Heights that the Trump administration has just recognized as belonging to Israel. However, the Golan Heights is not the only area that receives a judgment of fire. God also rains fire on a people group who dwells carelessly in the isles or the coastlands. Ezekiel 39, two through six says, and I will turn thee back, Gog, and leave but the sixth part of thee, and will cause thee to come up from the north parts and will bring thee upon the mountains of Israel. Thou shalt fall upon the mountains of Israel, thou and thy bands and the people that is with thee. And I will send fire among Magog and among them that dwell carelessly in the isles or the coastlands. And they shall know that I am the Lord. Wow, is it possible we will see this war? Nobody can tell you when this war will take place, but our team at Prophecy USA can assure you this, the Gog Magog war is inevitable and we, the young lions, will definitely be involved. However, the most alarming detail concerning God's fiery judgment over there is the phrase that they who dwell carelessly in the isles will receive the same judgment. But who exactly are they? The word carelessly in this Hebrew passage is the word beta, meaning confident and unsuspecting. Now the English Standard Version Bible uses the word securely, which is the exact description of the Lady of Kingdoms, Babylon the Great, who is deposed immediately before the New World Order comes into power. In the Isles or Coastlands it is, is a perfect description of the young lions of Tarshish, who obviously lives far away in the coastlands. However, Babylon, who trades with the merchants of the earth, with her deep port cities, obviously dwells on the coastlines. Her coastal location, the pride of her wealth, the security of her military, and the fiery judgment linked with the Gog-Magog war is a haunting description of Babylon's demise before the new world order deposes her. Isaiah 47, eight through 11 says, Now, therefore hear this, you lover of pleasures, who sits securely, who says in your heart, I am, and there is no one beside me. I shall not sit as a widow or know the loss of children. Therefore shall come upon thee, thou shalt not know from whence it riseth, and mischief shall befall upon thee, and desolation shall come upon thee suddenly, which thou shalt not know. Behold, they shall be stubble. The fire shall burn them, they shall not deliver themselves from the power, of the flame, even the merchants of the earth shall wander every one to his quarter, and none shall save thee. We've matched the description of those dwelling carelessly in the isles with the woman Babylon the Great. In previous programs, we've uprooted over 50 verses in scripture that describe this mystery nation. And the United States of America recognized globally as a woman 
matches every description. The forming of the Gog Magog War is going to be viewed on North American TV just like the Mideast crisis was in 1991. However, we may not need a TV to see the results of that war. We might just need to look out of our own windows. Isaiah gives us a hint of how this event will happen. Isaiah 47, 11 says, Therefore shall evil come upon thee, and thou shalt not know from whence it arises, and mischief shall befall thee. From this verse, it is evident that Babylon does not know from whence her judgment comes. In other words, it will come as a preemptive strike. But will it come from one of the nations who are joining Gog and Magog while they attack Israel? A hundred years after Isaiah's prophecy, another prophet is visited by an angel, Jeremiah. But he failed in convincing King Zedekiah of the coming destruction of Jerusalem that will come from historical Babylon of 605 BC. And at this time of his ministry, Jeremiah was mocked, laughed, scoffed, and eventually thrown into a cistern for his word of gloom and doom towards Israel. Now, the false prophets during that time refused to warn the people of the sins of Baal worship, child sacrifice, or the immoral deprivation in the nation. They prophesied peace, but Jeremiah delivered the exact word the Lord had spoken to him instead of the candy-coated fluff that the itching ear of God's people wanted to hear. You know, our team at Prophecy USA does not believe this Gog-Magog war is going to be watched on North American TV like the Mideast crisis was. North Americans will not need satellite TV to see the results of this war. But how far away are we from this war? What signs should we be looking for? Stay tuned. We'll be right back and we'll address those questions right after this short break. Four thousand years ago, an antichrist religion was birthed in ancient Babylon. Yet Joshua overcame it, Gideon overturned it, Elijah overwhelmed it, and Josiah overthrew it. This vile religion demands a rejection of God's commandments, a defiance of God's morals, a resurgence of asterisk poles with rampant immorality, and the shedding of innocent blood that cries out for judgment. These are the signs of a nation seduced by Baal worship. But what is the answer? 2,000 years ago, innocent blood was shed for you. But will America come back? Will she seek God's forgiveness or will she suffer His judgment? Prophecy USA proudly presents a study guide addressing America's spiritual state of the union concerning her past, present, and future role in Bible prophecy. Call right now with your donation of $20 or more to receive your copy, 1-888-306-1759, or go online to prophecyusa.org right now. Welcome back. We've been discussing a war prophesied to take place in the last days. It's called the Gog-Magog War by most prophecy teachers. And we've asked the questions, what signs should we be looking for before that war takes place? Roughly in 600 years before Christ, God sent an angel to Jeremiah the prophet to warn him of the rise of historical Babylon and how God would use her to judge Israel. Now, the other prophets contradicted everything the Lord had spoken to Jeremiah, telling Jeremiah that he was wrong. In his frustration, Jeremiah petitioned the Lord, and the Lord responded by saying this. In Jeremiah 23, 13, he said, Jeremiah, I have seen the folly of the prophets of Samaria. They prophesied in Baal and caused my people to err. They walk in lies. They strengthen the hand of evildoers. They are like unto me as Sodom and the inhabitants of Gomorrah. So hearken not unto the words of the prophets that prophesy unto you. They make you vain. 
They speak a vision of their own heart and not out of the mouth of the Lord. Yet they say still unto them that despise me, you shall have peace. And they say to unto everyone who walketh after his own imagination, out of his own heart, no evil shall come upon you. In the latter days ye shall consider it perfectly. I have not sent these prophets, yet they ran. I have not spoken to them, yet they prophesied. But you know, Jeremiah, if they had stood in my counsel and had caused my people to hear my word, they would have turned them from their ways and from their evil doings. Now Israel fell to Babylon in 605 B.C., just as Jeremiah had prophesied. But even before the 70 years of the Babylonian captivity began, the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah and he prophesied or foretold the judgment that would eventually come to Babylon. Remember Amos 3.6 says, Surely the Lord will do nothing unless he reveal it unto his servants, the prophets. Jeremiah 51, 27 says, Blow the trumpet among the nations. Prepare the nations against Babylon. Call together against her the kingdoms of Ararat, Mini, and Ashkenaz. Prepare against her the nations with the kings of the Medes. And the land shall tremble and sorrow, for every purpose of the Lord shall be performed to make the land of Babylon a desolation without inhabitant. Now, ethnologists tell us that Ararat is the land of modern-day Turkey near the Russian and Iranian borders. Many are a people who lived in the present-day location of northwestern Iran, and the Medes were an ancient Iranian people who lived in Persia, which today we call Iran. But could this prophecy that Jeremiah gave be a typology or a dual prophecy, meaning it not only refers back to then and there, but it has significant meaning to us in the here and now. In Jeremiah's prophecy, it warns, O thou that dwellest upon many waters abundant in treasures, thine end is come. Behold, am I, I am against thee. I will stretch out my hand upon thee and will make thee a burnt mountain. The land shall tremble in sorrow, for every purpose shall be performed against Babylon to make her a desolation without an inhabitant. Her cities are a desolation, and I will punish Bel in Babylon. Then the heaven and the earth shall sing for Babylon, and her high gates shall be burned with fire. We now see Jeremiah prophesies that Turkey, Iran, and the lands bordering Russia prophesied 2,750 years ago, then and there, will be used to make Babylon the Great a desolation here and now. These nations are part of the coalition of aggressive nations that are involved in Ezekiel's Gog Magog War, five-sixths of whose armies will be burnt with fire on the Golan Heights, as well as those who dwell carelessly in the isles. You know, in February 2019, leaders of Russia, Turkey, and Iran formed an alliance that was prophesied by Jeremiah 2,550 years ago. Two out of these nations, Russia and Turkey, have more nuclear warheads than the USA. Currently, Iran is spinning weapon-grade pl plutonium while the U.S. enhances global sanctions against her. The prophets Isaiah, Jeremiah, Ezekiel, and John have given us multiple descriptions of the nation who dwells carelessly, and every description points to the United States of America. But is there hope? Is it all doom and gloom? According to Scripture, absolutely not. God's covenant with those who believe still guarantees His divine provision, guidance and his divine protection. So don't miss this next segment because I can assure you something good is coming to those who believe. We'll be right back.
Prophecy USA is proud to present their latest study guide providing over 50 biblical references describing the past, the present, and the future of this great nation. Joining the dots that unveil the hidden mystery of America's role in Bible prophecy. To order your copy of the Prophecy USA study guide, call 1-888-306-1759 or go to prophecyusa.org. Call today. Welcome back. We've been discussing the Gog-Magog war that will not end well for the enemies of Israel. Those enemies are not just in the Middle East. They're scattered all over the world, but of course so are Israel's dedicated friends. The result of the Magog war ends in a fiery judgment very similar to Babylon's great, Babylon the Great's judgment. But exactly how long will it take to perform the preemptive strike on Babylon? John gives us multiple verses to answer that question. Revelation 18.10 says, The merchants will stand afar off in the fear of her torment and say, You mighty city Babylon, for in a single hour your judgment has come. Revelation 14.7, And he said with a loud voice, Fear God and give him glory, because the hour of his judgment has come. And who will administer that judgment? Revelation 17, 12 says, And the ten horns that you saw are ten kings who have not yet received royal power, but they are to receive authority as kings for one hour together with the beast. They will hate the whore, or Babylon the great. They will make her desolate and naked and devour her flesh and burn her with fire. For God has put into their hearts to carry out His purposes by being of one mind and handing over their royal power to the beast until the words of God are fulfilled. Now from these verses, we can see multiple times that the judgment of Babylon will take place literally in one hour. And we can also see that this seventh providential nation is deposed by the eighth providential nation, the New World Order. In perfect detail, God shows us who ministers the judgment, the time it will take, and what method will be done. The Antichrist and his ten nations perform the judgment, for they carry out his purpose by being of one mind. However, in Jeremiah 51, we see the modern-day countries of Iran, Turkey, and Russia being used to judge Babylon the Great with fire. Now, these three nations are also identified in the seven-nation coalition attacking Israel in the Gog-Magog War. Now, the Antichrist has ten nations in his new world order. Could the seven nations who attack Israel be part of the ten kings who join Antichrist in a preemptive strike on Babylon. Remember, Gog has an evil thought, and the beast and the ten kings come together with one mind to destroy Babylon. The New World, world Order cannot take its position until the seventh nation, Babylon the Great, is deposed. So what can believers do as we unravel this mystery? How can anyone make a difference when it comes to God's prophetic word? The answer lies within the believers of Philadelphia who have made themselves ready. They are like the five wise virgins who have oil in their lamps. They overcome the sins that Jesus unveiled within the other six churches. Sins of immorality, dead works, not putting God first in their life, not prioritizing their finances with first fruit offerings, being rich in God, and not partici nor participating in the works of His kingdom. Only God will determine who is worthy to escape the hour of tribulation that shall come upon the earth. And Scripture has warned His people in Babylon to come out of her, my people. Be not partakers of her sins, neither be partakers in her plagues. Folks, it's time to roll up your sleeves and start doing works of the kingdom at the very least and help finance the works that are already in place. Remember Revelation 3.8 says, I know your works, 
Behold, I have set before you an open door which no man can shut. I know that you have but little strength, and yet you have kept my word and have not denied my name. Because you have kept my word, I will keep you from the hour of tribulation that is coming on the whole world to try those who dwell on the earth. This open door promise is the only time sequence in Scripture that hints of the pre-tribulation rapture which will initiate the marriage supper of the Lamb. Revelation 19.1 says there is a shout of much people in heaven for God has judged the great prostitute and avenged his people. The marriage of the Lamb has come. Blessed are they who are called unto the marriage supper of the Lamb. At this point in time, we see that the bride of Christ is no longer on the earth, nor in Babylon. She's at the marriage supper of the Lamb immediately after Babylon is judged. The worldwide progressive movement who does not want God, the Ten Commandments, prayer in school, Bible in schools, or Judeo-Christian moral protocol within our culture will finally get their way. They will be given a world without God, without His provision, without His protection, and without His guidance. It will be a godless society governed by a satanic leader, and it will be the biggest mess this world has ever seen. The only thing that we are guaranteed of is it will come suddenly, unexpectedly, and in one hour, everything will change. But before that hour comes, God's covenant with His believers in Babylon will keep her the richest, most powerful nation in the history of the world. And she will fulfill the last 53 descriptions before she is judged. 51 she will maintain her covenant with God and be hated by the Antichrist and his ten nations until her appointed time comes. 52, she will have believers within her doing the works of God's kingdom and those believers will be verbally persecuted by the accuser of the brethren as they raise up a shout against the Babylonian spirits attempting to defile God's covenant with America. Number 53, she will be Israel's number one advocate and will stand with the other young lions of Tarshish when Gog is released to fulfill his evil role in Bible prophecy. You know, we're out of time. Don't miss next week when we reveal the believer's celebration in heaven and the Baal worship's misery on earth coming immediately after the one hour that changes everything. You've been listening to Prophecy USA. My name is Rick Pearson, reminding you that Jesus Christ is alive and He's coming back much sooner than many people think. See you next week. Shalom.